here. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, we thank the Lord for the opportunity to continue to receive from our Father in heaven. Out of His mercies, out of His grace, He's been feeding us with the word, giving us direction about cause 313 kingdom culture, the lifestyle of saints. It doesn't matter where we are, anywhere in the world. If we are indeed redeemed by the same blood of Yeshua, indeed have the same Father, indeed have the same spirit of Elohim, then the word of Elohim is a constitution of the kingdom for all of us. And if we give the word space, the Lord will use it to work out his purpose in our lives and we will live out the culture of the kingdom. There will be no struggle, the lifestyle, the morals, the values, the ethical considerations, they are all embedded in the world. And so what the Lord is doing is to give us uh, uh, an idea of where he wants us to flow to us. And he began in the, uh, you know, several lessons ago, lesson 18 or so, he began to that break down certain principles for us. And then we went on to the Sermon on the Mount where he was, you know, teaching the saints who gathered to us him. That this is the way. These are the things that are of value in my kingdom. And so here in lesson 35 today, we come to kingdom co culture component number 26, discernment as a panacea for deception. And number 27 is the need to build our lives on the world. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we just bless you for the opportunity to receive these instructions, Lord. Have your way and glorify Yeshua. And let your name be always hallowed amongst us in Yeshua's name. Amen. Now, in verse 15 of Matthew 7, he began to tell us something important. That Satan uses deception to walk through false prophets. Verse 15, they were false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are of any wolves. So, here the king, in that Sermon on the Mount, those three chapters, he gave something that was going to define the experience of the church. False, prophet, false prophets are agents of Satan with a clear mandate to deceive. Deceive humanity generally, and deceive the saints in particular. And the grand plan of their modus operandi is to mask their true identity in order to make saints lower their guards, open doors to their, of their hearts and minds, and receive the toxic things that they are selling. You know, the sheep by nature is meek and harmless, is a domesticated animal, it threatens no one, is rather a good follower, and sheep moves in pack, sheep fold. So the wolf, on the other hand, is a wild animal which stalks and kills its victims, tears them up, and especially sheep. So, by disguising a sheep, the wolf can gain access to the sheepfold, which is the community of saints where the wolves can wreak havoc when people are unsuspecting. And so for that reason, he gave us some principles. He says in verse 16, you shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Men and brethren, there is nowhere in the Bible the Lord says believers should do what is now common. What is common now is that believers accept every prophetic word as true from him. Ab initio. Anybody say thus says the Lord, anybody says anything, believers grab and run with that. Two, today, they embrace everyone who says something nice or factual about them as prophet. Three, there's a, this tendency to develop an attitude of codependency where a believer needs a word before doing anything. I want a word. You go to a conference, a preacher can preach. Everything preaches hard out. Say all the Lord gave to him, he's been praying for all along. That same preacher who spoke to the people comes down, you know, maybe to go to the bathroom or to go and grab a bite, and people will basically want him, stop, I want a word. So what was he saying all along? 
All that one hour, 45 minutes of teaching and preaching was nothing to them. They want a word. And this is a sign of corruption. Rather than grab anything that we are told, brothers and sisters, the uniform testimony of scripture shows that the Lord warned his church to be aware of the dangers posed by attempts of Satan to hijack this office function of prophet and use him to destroy the lives of believers. And brothers and sisters, when we ministered on the end time events, the very first warning Yeshua gave in the great Oliver prophecy was about deception, about false prophets, about the need to be careful. If you look at Matthew 24, verse 4, Yeshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Verse 11, For many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Verse 23, when they say to you, Lo, here is he, uh, the Messiah, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false uh, Christ and false prophets, and they shall show great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. Behold, I've told you before. Wherefore, if they say unto you, Behold, is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Brothers and sisters, Second Peter chapter 2, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among the people, who shall privily bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord about them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And of course, the ultimate prophet is the false prophet, Revelation 13, the man who will arise at the end of the age, from verse 11 all the way to the end, verse 18, this is the man who will validate the Antichrist, who is going to do great and mighty miracles. If I is said that verse 11 of Revelation 13, I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon, the false prophet, the ultimate of all. Look at that. He excited all the power of the first beast before him. Cursed the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was wounded. He doeth great. As even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them again. So the Lord emphasized the need to use fruit rather, you know, use fruit, not gift, not the accuracy even of words uttered. Use the fruit of life. To evaluate and decide who to receive some. So what are some of these telltale signs to watch out for concerning those who abuse this office or, or reject? If any gives you a word and emphasizes it is from the Lord and the need, you need to accept it unquestionably. A spiritual antenna should need to go up. Three, cash. If you are required to give up money in order for the prophecy to work for you, this is a real giveaway. Run for your life. Four, ownership. If a prophecy receives suggests that you should, before you can walk in the blessing pronounced, you need to leave the ministry or church where you are part of to join that prophet, it's a sign that something is wrong. Five, permissiveness. One of the foundational assignments of prophecy is to challenge says to live holy and be ever ready for the return of the Lord. Prophecies which do not challenge spiritual states, but are inclined to give you a heart full of love of the world, should be an early warning that something is wrong. Six inaccurate utterances. One early indicator of veracity of utterances is whether they come to pass. As we're told in throughout the Bible, if words are spoken excite the flesh but are not accurate, something is off. Then seven, where is the place of the word in the life of the prophet? Nowadays we hear prophets who say, well, I don't know the word. I mean, I had one directly. Me, I don't know the word. All I need is to prophesy. I don't know the Bible is to prophesy. You know what? That's danger to the soul of the people. 
Because if a prophet glories in not knowing the word and does not desire to know the word, something is wrong with that prophetic utterance that such a person is going to be given. So, men and brethren, let's now look at faith of true and false ministers. He said in verse 21, Not everyone, Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. It is doers of the will of Elohim who are not mere professors that will enter the manifest phase of the kingdom when Yeshua returns to rule and reign. And the eternal realm, Verse 22, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Did we not prophesy in your name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. Take notice, says many. So many who prophesy the name of Yeshua, it implies they spoke in his name, it's not like they called on another god before prophesying, or also that the words spoken were even accurate. Many would miss eternity. The same faith await those who cast out evil spirits, did many wonderful works in the name of the Lord, miracles, signs, wonders. They will be deemed workers of iniquity and rejected on the last day. And this is so sad. So people need to make fix their lives while there's time. So, brothers and sisters, these things, what then is the biblical solution to this situation, this epidemic of people carrying the word? You know, it's now the most popular office in one particular nation in West Africa. Oh, no, 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 no. Everybody's a prophet. Everybody wants to prophesy on social media, anywhere and everywhere. What is the biblical solution to this situation? Number one, saints should be part of congregations ministries and networks where the fivefold offices apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers are operational it is a place of safety that's what Ephesians 4 says 11 he gave some apostles and some prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers why for the perfecting of the saints collectively they perfect the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Yeshua then he says in verse 13 till we come to the unity of the faith to the knowledge of the son of Elohim to a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Yeshua. Then in verse 14, it tells us why. That you will henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. If people receive the, from the fivefold, they are going to be solidified and it's going to be difficult for anybody to come and deceive them. That is why it's so important that we know it's a very dangerous thing when they receive the apostolic impute and they are built up. Then we need to also understand that not just this issue of fivefold. Number two, Apart from those with confirmed gift of dreaming dreams that are messages from Elohim or interpret or have the gift of interpretation, do not swallow hook, line, and sinker whatever anybody say he has dreamt. We live in a world where people are just babyish. So you see, people dream, well, dream, I dreamt that dream, and people are running helter skelter because of a dream. Listen to this, brothers and sisters, 2.1. Dreams can indeed be messages from Elohim, and if it is message from him, he watch over his word to confirm and establish it. On the other hand, 2.2, dreams can also arise out of multitude of business which are stored in the subconscious mind, and then when the mind is at rest of sleep, it moves from the subconscious to the conscious. The, the Most of the business are activities. Activities that kind of weary you, weary you, make you feel, you know, you are, you are just so full of so many things in your mind. They can seep into your subconscious and when you are sleeping, they come out. So a dream does not necessarily mean a message from Elohim. It could be something coming from your subconscious. Certain things are stored inside of you. 2.3. Dreams can also be part of Satan's bag of tricks to destabilize or manipulate a saint. Such dreams that are from Satan 
You know what? They still what fear, worry, apprehension, feeling of insecurity. They still have tendency to suspect or hate other people because of what was supposedly seen. Satan has separated many saints from their families, some from their friends, some from their pastors, some from their destiny helpers assigned by Elohim, just as somebody dreamt. It's not somebody carrying a club, chasing you. And you just believe it's basically from God for you to separate from the church where the Lord planted you, where you have been nurtured. And this is happening worldwide to know it's an epidemic. No, dreams should be interpreted properly and dreams should be checked out against other things. What is the intention of the enemy? That which you see, there are things the Lord will not do to us. The Lord will teach us kingdom culture and how to live kingdom culture. Satan will not teach us kingdom culture. He won't teach us long suffering. He won't teach us patience. He will teach us bond the bridge, bond the bridge. Go, go. And so somebody you were good friends with, suddenly you now call him an enemy and all that. Men and brethren. Number 13, how to, solution. Do not believe everything uttered at first hand. Try them to discern the source. First John chapter 4, 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of Elohim, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is so important. So take note of that. Number four, in congregations and ministry settings, no one should give messages in tongues except he or she can interpret or where there are vessels with the gift of interpretation thereof. That's what we are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 27. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, that is to say with a microphone on the pulpit, let it be by two or three, let it, by, let it be by two or at the most by three, and that by cause one after the other. And let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to Elohim. It is for safety so that nobody is manipulated, especially the younger ones. Number five, in congregations and ministries, the holy habit of judging all utterances purportedly from Elohim needs to be restored in these end times. First Corinthians chapter 14, 29, let the prophet speak two or three. And let the other judge. If anything be revealed to him that seated by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted, and the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For Elohim is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Men and brethren, these principles are important. Because we are entering that phase where this is going to be like an epidemic. It's already manifested in different parts of the world. If it's not in your neighborhood, check out, prepare. It's surely coming. This has been talked about for over 2,000 years ago. And last one, number 27, kingdom culture principle is need to build on the world. Verse 24, therefore, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. The sun descended, the rain descended rather, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Men and brethren, those who hear the sermon on the mount and live by the principles of kingdom culture, they are building on solid foundation because the word of the king is like a rock. So the Lord is giving us these things to enable us. And if you're part of the IMF family, can you imagine how glorious it will be that if the Lord tarries before the next open gate, all of us will have covered the New Testament before the next conference. All of us will have heard for ourselves what the Lord is saying to us by Holy Spirit. And then for those who are doing this course, we will have all be empowered to be instruments of promoting kingdom culture, manifesting kingdom culture, and advancing the kingdom. Them right where we are. It will all start with a life where we say, you know what, Lord, tell me what you want to tell me. Give me the grace to obey. And we want to hear from the Lord. There is an itching ear tendency today, and the itching ear is towards what will please the ear, what, what will tickle the ear. And people are just choosing for themselves teachers 
Oh, yeah, that man, oh, that woman, she knows how to encourage you. And that's what I need now. I don't need anything. I don't need anything. Don't tell me anything about what to fix. I just want to be encouraged. And people are choosing television. These strangers, they don't know the background of people. Some of them are living in lives that you will never, ever know. Nothing, no information, no contact. And just some people learn how to mine certain scriptures, take them to the surface, throw it. The Lord say, no. If you are a, a saint redeemed by the blood, you are born again by the word of Elohim, take the word seriously. Value the word. Be hungry for the word. Be thirsty for the word. And above all, be open. The Holy Spirit who teaches you the word will give the grace to live by the principles and precepts in the word. If you live that way, your life is unshakable. You make it. Then he said, on the other hand, those who hear the sayings of mine, verse 26, and do it them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Can you imagine the tragedy of being in church, suffering all the indignations, the things you deprive yourself of? Can you imagine at the end of the day, one misses eternity? One misses eternity because one was not careful to live by the world. Brothers and sisters, that would be a tragedy. It is nothing for anyone to ever contemplate. And that's why the Lord wants us to know that while there's time, we can fix things with the Lord. All it takes is to have him touch our heart, repent, and to turn to him, and the Lord shall be pleased. And while the word tells us that when Yeshua finished, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. We're going to end here. And today the assignment is, number one, please cite three warnings of Yeshua and his apostles about the danger of false prophets. Two, provide three things by which a saint can discern that a person giving a word of prophecy may not be genuine. Three, what are biblical solutions to the issue of false prophets? Four, share any other thing you receive from this lesson. We're going to close here and pray now and trust the Lord to now share with us some other principles. We're going to have some other lessons, maybe eight or nine, whatever more lessons before we close out this very important course on kingdom culture. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to receive from you. You are faithful beyond measure. Have your way and now by your spirit interpret this word to your saints and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father. We know that grace will be released for us to be able to live by these truths to your own glory and praise, Father. In Yeshua Jesus' name, Amen and Amen.